Today we'll be demonstrating how Sentinel-1 can be used to secure resources running in AWS, including virtual machines running in EC2 and Kubernetes workloads in Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service, EKS, or Elastic Container Service, ECS. So let's dive right in. So we've got a couple of AMIs that are already running and checking into the Sentinel-1 management console. And one of the ways that Sentinel-1 makes this easier on administrators is the ability to easily deploy and scale with the AMIs as you deploy them. So what I've done is I've baked an image into an AMI and then created a launch template. And this just really quickly allows us to choose a new AMI to deploy and scale our infrastructure customize it however we want. And then in, in the advanced details, I've got it set up to start the Sentinel-1 agent. And if I hit launch instance from template, Amazon does its thing. And then we'll wait for the, con for the agent to show up in the management console. And there's our AMI checking in. And it's going to automatically receive the policies associated with the group that we've created, which is AWS EC2 EKS. If we take a look at the policy, we've currently got this set in a detect only mode. And we'll start off in that mode to see what happens when we put a little bit of malware on this virtual machine. And then later we'll flip to a protect kill and quarantine and automated protection. So we've already connected in to our virtual machine. And I'm just going to take a coin miner and we're going to upload it. Pivoting over to the instance detail, we can see here is our detection of the coin miner. Now, because we've got ourselves in a detect only mode, we can see the malware does exist. We properly identify this as a coin miner. And now as an administrator, I can choose to take some actions up here in the top right hand corner. I can select mitigation action, kill and quarantine. And if, it, if the threat applied to more than one machine in my environment, I could leave this box checked or uncheck it to apply just to the single machine. We'll hit apply. And the Sentinel-1 agent will issue the command to kill and quarantine the coin miner file. All right, kill and quarantine was successful and we can see that the file no longer exists. It was successfully quarantined. Now let's change the policy of this agent, put it into a more automated posture. We'll come over here back to policy, choose protect kill and quarantine from malicious and suspicious threats and select save. And then we'll go back to incidents and we'll re-upload our coin miner again, but this time we'll watch the automated actions take place. So we've uploaded it. We already have a detection. And in this case, the green checkbox is already set. The file is quarantined. And if we look on our machine, the file is not there. It's that easy to set up automated protections on Linux EC2 instances, or really anything running in EC2. One agent, which auto scales with the demands of your Kubernetes cluster. That's one agent to protect the Kubernetes worker, all its pods, and all their containers, and no messy container instrumentation to gum up the works. Just clean, agile, DevOps friendly runtime security and EDR for the Kubernetes workloads. Let's go ahead and dive right in. What we have here is a two node Amazon EKS cluster with the pods checking into the Sentinel-1 management console. And what we've done is installed DVWA onto one of the pods and this will be the interface for our attack. We will then simulate our malware as if an attacker found the vulnerable web server and then decided to use a command injection to actually infect our machine. So let's jump over to DVWA. And what we will do is enter a command to download and execute some malware. But what we will find is that Sentinel-1's patented machine learning technology will detect both the command injection and the malware, and then appropriately convict them per policy, which is currently set to automatically remediate. All right, let's hit submit 
and we'll see that the command was successful and that the malware was downloaded. And pivoting over to incidents in the Sentinel-1 management console, we can see that the malware was detected and then automatically remediated. Digging a little bit deeper to get some context, we can see that the file was quarantined and that Sentinel-1 identified the malware as a Trojan. We have some extra information at the bottom, like what node, namespace, pod, and container where the event occurred. So for the second scenario, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to demonstrate Sentinel-1 application control. And the thought behind this feature is what happens if an attacker, instead of, a, you know, going directly after a web application, they go directly after the pod and they manage to get control of it. Sentinel-1 application control defines a pod as immutable. So nothing is allowed to run other than what was included in the image when the pod was started. And so what we'll do, let's run kubectl get pods. Here we can see our pod. And we're gonna go ahead and exec into the pod itself and request a bash shell. Now what we're going to do next is download a script. And here we can see we downloaded it. It's a simple hello world script. We run chmod on it and then execute it. Now what's happening though is that because the container is set to application control mode, the hello world script was not part of the original image and therefore not allowed to execute. And we can see right below that the command was terminated. And if we jump over to the Sentinel-1 console, we see our detecting engine is application control. And that the threat specifically was killed and quarantined per the policy that we already have configured. Now, of course, like everything else, we can see that our classification was that application control did the conviction and that we have all of the standard metadata that we would expect like clustered node, namespace, pod, and container.